Hello friends, welcome to the channel. Today in this video lecture, we will learn about the soil erosion. And these are the topics which will be covered in this video lecture. The introduction, soil erosion, types of soil erosion, causes of soil erosion and the losses due to erosion. So friends, before going into the detail, it should be clear that uh, why we are studying soil conservation and what is the need to conserve the soil. So let's start with introduction. As we know that soil is one of the most valuable natural resources and this is a natural body. We cannot synthesize it artificially and also it is a medium for plants. Means it provide support to the plant as well as it also provide essential things like the water and nutrients to the plants for their survival. It is also a habitat for many organisms as we know that most of the microbes play important role to increase the fertility. For example, rhizomium, mycorrhiza, they help to increase the fertility of the soil. Soil also fulfilled vital needs of the human by producing the food, clothing material, wood for the furniture, medicine, etc. After knowing the importance of the soil, if we see the present scenario of the soil, so worldwide, approx 75 billion ton fertile soil are lost due to the erosion. And in India, it is 5,334 million ton. And because of this, soil erosion become a serious problem nowadays. And as the soil fertility is declining rapidly, so behind this, there are various reasons. So some of them are these extensive farming, deforestation, excess use of pesticide and fertilizer. And friends, if you know, the process of the soil formation, so you know that 1 cm of soil takes 8 to 10,000 years to form and this is a very long duration. And for the soil formation, how soil formed? Soil is formed by the withering of rocks or the parent material. And during this process, various reactions run simultaneously. And once soil formed, so then there is a picture of soil profile which is char characterized into a different horizons. So the first top horizon, two horizon that is O and A. O horizon, it is rich in organic matter and A horizon, it is rich in the minerals. And springs, during the soil erosion, the top most layer is eroded first. That is why we need to conserve the soil. Because soil is very important for the cultivation and to fulfill the needs of the future generation. We need to conserve the soil. Now come to the soil erosion. So friends, it is a process of detachment of soil particles from the parent body or the surface of the soil and transportation of the detached soil particles by wind or water. So friends, in the process of soil erosion, there are two mechanisms which mainly work. The first is detachment or the second transportation. Detachment means the detachment of the particle from its parent material and the transportation means the movement of the particles, soil particles from one place to the another place and here detaching agents are raindrops, channel flow and wind and the transporting agents are flowing water and wind. So ultimately for the soil erosion there are two things water and wind that are mainly responsible for the soil erosion and based on agent there are two type of soil erosion water erosion and the wind erosion and water erosion refers to the movement of water along with soil and there is a type of soil erosion so there are five types of the soil erosion or we can say the stages of the water erosion so the first is the sheet erosion it is also known as the first stage of the water erosion or the initial stage. What happened in this stage? When the rainfall occurs, so the raindrops churn the topsoil and along with the runoff, the muddy water moves away from the field. Or we can say it is a uniform removal of topsoil in thin layer from the field. So here you can see the picture, the first picture in this, the uniform loss of the soil. And in the second picture, if you see the surface of the soil, so you will see the, the sur surface soil get churned due to the rain splash, then the rail erosion. And this is a second stage of the water erosion. Uh, 
what happened in this stage when there is a continuous rainfall so there is no longer uniform removal of the water and a channelization begins here you can see the channels begin and it is more apparent than the sheet erosion then the third stage is the gully erosion it is a most spectacular form of erosion and at this stage deep cut are formed on the ground friends mainly gullies are formed due to the high velocity of water for a longer period of time next the fourth is ravine it is a result of long process of gully erosion when water is flowing continuously for a longer period of time with high velocity so the ultimately gullies are converted into the ravine so friends finally the landslide a uh, landslide mainly occur in a mountain area or the hilly areas where the large chunk of the soil gets sliding down due to the steep slopes and uh, because of this it leads to the uh, severe soil erosion after knowing the types of the vegetation now the factors which affect the soil erosion so these are the factors the first one is a rainfall it is very important or the major factors because it affect the both mechanism like transportation or the detachment and under the rainfall these three points are the considerable the first is the duration rainfall rainfall duration means if the intensity is low but the duration is long so what will happen due to the continuous flow of water soil get loose and become more susceptible to the soil erosion the second one is the amount rainfall amount here amount means the type of the precipitation actually there are various type of precipitation like sleet hail drizzle mist which are categorized based on the drop size or we can say the diameter of the drop or we can say that uh, the drop size is directly proportional to the soil loss then the rainfall intensity so the next is the rainfall intensity means if the intensity is very high so it will affect the detachment mechanism of the soil which leads to the more erosion so the next factor is a vegetation factor which is also very important for the better understanding see this is the picture of the land without vegetation and another side the land is covered with the cover crop so what happen in the land where there is no vegetation when the rainfall occur so the rain drop will directly come contact with the soil surface because of this there will be more detachment as well as runoff see the another picture where the land is covered with the cover crop so when the rainfall occur the rain drops will not directly come in the contact with the soil surface first the contact with the vegetation and uh, here vegetation helps to reduce the impact of the rain drops also vegetation had the root system and uh, the roots which tightly bind with the soil particles so it control the soil erosion due to this the type of vegetation also matter where there is a more erosion so in those area dense crop is preferable than the wide spacing cropping after this the plant height uh, means the topmost leaf of the plant or the canopy of the plant intercepted the rain drop which reduces the rain drop impact the next factor is a soil and uh, as we know that the physical properties of soil like the soil texture or the structure they affect the both detachability and the transportation of the soil particles in the sandy soil or the light soil the particles are not tightly attached with each other so here is detachment is easy but the transportation is difficult due to the large particles or the heavy weight of the particles so because of this and as sandy soil has the more porosity so there is a high infiltration rate and less runoff while in case of the clayey soil or the heavy soil here the soil particles are tightly attached with each other so the detachment is 
difficult but the transportation is easy uh, due to its lightweight and uh, clayey soil or heavy soil has the less porosity that is why it has a less infiltration and more runoff so friends if we compare the all texture like sandy soil clayey soil and the silt soil so among these texture silt soil has the less erodibility than the other two and the last factor is man and animal man also responsible for the soil erosion by its some activities like the extractive farming or the construction while the animal destroy all the vegetation by the excessive grazing so friends these are the some factors which affect the soil erosion friends there are various losses due to the soil erosion so some of them are these the first is a loss of rain water actually in a dryland areas uh, the rain the rain water is the only source for the irrigation and during the soil erosion most of the water get lost the second is a loss of fertile soil uh, it is estimated that in india 16.35 ton of soil eroded annually which is much more than the permissible value the third is a nutrient losses as we know that the during the soil erosion the top most layer of the soil get eroded first which is rich in humus rich in organic matter or the minerals so uh, due to the soil erosion it is a big loss for the for the farmers the last is a silting of reservoir when water reaches reservoir the velocity is reduced and sediment settle on the floor of the reservoir so the depth of reservoir is gradually decreased so friend this is a second type of the soil erosion that is wind erosion and friends wind is nothing it is a air mass in motion wind uh, has a mass which require energy and due to this energy when the wind blow over the surface or in the atmosphere so it detach the soil particles from its parent material or the uh, or the soil surface and if we go with the definition so it is a process of detachment transportation and deposition of soil material by wind when picks up the lighter particles lift them from the surface and transport them to a long distance then the type of the wind erosion so there are three types of the wind erosion saltation surface creep and the suspension so what happen in the saltation in the saltation the soil particles the soil particles which has uh, the diameter 0.1 to the 0.5 mm they jumped up vertically into the air and rise to a height of 30 to 60 cm and fall through the air means the soil particles move from one place to the another place by the jumping and uh, there is 50 to 70% weight of the soil get eroded due to the saltation so the next type is a surface creep here in this picture you can see the process of the creeping uh, in in this process the coarse sand particles uh, of which has the diameter 0.5 to the 0.3 mm they get rolled over the surface because they are large particles and have heavy weight so they get rolled only over the surface instead of jumping and uh, uh, due to the creeping 5 to 25% weight of the soil get eroded and the next type is a suspension where the fine dust particles float in the air due to its light weight or the small size of the soil particles and uh, due to the suspension process only 3 to 4% weight of the soil get eroded so friends now the factors which affect the wind erosion some of the factors are these first is a wind velocity and wind velocity is a major factors or the major agent of wind erosion uh, we can say the wind velocity is directly proportional to the wind erosion the second is a soil wind soil is also very important factor because 
uh, in the soil soil texture structure organic matter present in the soil moisture content present in the soil all the things are matter the influence of the soil texture we already discussed in the previous slide and the next is a soil structure uh, soil structure is the aggregation of all the primary particles like sand silt and clay and if the soil structure is well formed so there will be less erodibility the next is the organic matter organic matter influence the all properties of the soil physical chemical or the biological it helps to increase the porosity water holding capacity and the binding uh, binding ability of the soil particles the last is a moisture content if soil has sufficient moisture so there would be less wind erosion because dry soil is more susceptible than the moist soil so the next is a vegetation vegetation is also a primary cause because wind erosion is more on those areas where the land is without vegetation now the preventive measure of wind erosion friends wind erosion can be controlled by two methods whether by reducing the wind speed or whether decreasing the erodibility of the soil so this is the first method vegetative measure this method is mainly used to reduce the velocity of the wind in this method the big plants planted in the field across the direction of the wind and these plants are helps to reduce the wind speed and the second method is a tillage practice which helps to uh, decrease the erodibility of the soil because uh, after the tillage practice soil uh, uh, soil structure improve and it hold the more moisture so so soil become less susceptible for the wind erosion now the next is a mechanical measure uh, in this method we use some kind of fence, fences which helps to reduce the wind velocity as well as it control the movement of soil particles from one place to the another place so these are the some practice by which we can control the wind erosion so friends if you like this video so like it and subscribe it and if you have any query regarding this video lecture so you can comment uh, in the comment section and thank you